any of the same parameters that uh, Graydon just talked to you about. Um, but we were really interested in finding rapid, simple solutions for plant operators. Uh, we developed first the safe test, which was in probably more than 80 plants originally in 2005 going forward. And now we have refined it into what we call mini scan. Uh, something that we think would be easier, faster, more sensitive, more accurate than the original system. Less of a lab procedure. These procedures are really meant uh, for use for monitoring in plants. Um, they're not meant to be ASTM certified. Um, some of them are AOAC performance tested, uh, which is an easier way to get your method uh, validated here in the United States and in Europe. Uh, so we've been working with this for about seven years. Um, and our newest version is called MiniScan. It's a small handheld meter uh, that allows us to make measurements and do quantitative testing, not qualitative testing. Uh, when we first developed our first test, which was for total and free glycerin, uh, we took it to NREL and we did some validation with them. We had already validated on over 500 samples the free fatty acid uh, through AOAC. Uh, so we had a basic idea of how to work with feedstocks and then we developed free and total glycerin that allowed us to make quantitative measurements uh, versus the gas chromatograph. So this is different than you're going to look and decide if it's okay. It actually is going to give you a number for free fatty acid or a number for a total glycerin and I hope you'll be able to see how simple they are. I passed around some product sheets. I'm also going to pass around some typical manuals um, if you just look at them and then pass them on. The method is really extremely easy. Uh, we've tried to take uh, the difficulty out of it by pre-preparing uh, the test kits. This is typical of a test kit. This is a free fatty acid test kit. Um, allows you to run calibrations, known amounts of free fatty acid to dilute samples or actually test your samples. So this is a 10 test, it comes in a 50 test also. Everything you need is in here. You don't need all that other glassware, or the other isopropanol or anything else. Everything is in the test kit itself. Lifespan of the chemicals? Uh, this is, uh, we give it a shelf life of a year, it's probably longer. Um, there are total glycerin, uh, has a shelf life also of a year, but it is recommended to keep it at refrigerated temperatures. Very similar calibrators, dilution tubes, running the test, known amounts of total glycerin. So everything you need to run the test other than the mini scan and a heater. We provide uh, mini pipetters and we provide a flash drive. Everything comes in this one box. The flash drive allows us to take the readings on the mini scan, download it to a computer and pop up as an Excel spreadsheet so you can store all your results. Um, this also allows you to add programs. So we can send you something on the internet, you can put it on your flash drive, download it into the mini scan. We've been working on a couple tests. Uh, one of them is the soap test that Todd has been pushing me to put onto this uh, system. Today this system has on it total and two versions of acid number. Um, but as I said, our goal is really to add to the number of tests. This is the box that I just showed you. Comes with everything you need in order to be able to run tests. Oops, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned, it's upgradable with a flash drive, download data. Um, it's a very uh, sensitive system. Um, it is reading in the visible, but because of the way we position the light sources, the light sources and the reading, uh, we get accuracy to 0.001 optical density that rivals a Beckman, uh, and it's repeatable. So uh, it's a really nice new piece of equipment. It's different than our original safe test. This is our little version. And as I showed you, these are the format for our test kits. Current kits, 
total and free glycerin acid number, and then uh, free fatty acid. And we also do uh, fats, uh, fog analysis, and wastewater streams. And then we have a whole version of this complete system for the food industry. Uh, we work with a great deal with the food industry, some of them who are giving you their frying oil, uh, particularly the frying industry, so because they need also to monitor free fatty acid. Um, the food industry, we also look at peroxides. You can look at peroxides and biodiesel as a stability factor. You can measure that with our system. And you also can look at whole foods. We have a way to process whole foods and be able to measure degradants. And we can look at the fat content in foods, which is interesting for the food industry. So we have a range of tests that are for fats and fuels. We started in the food industry in 1999, and we've added in the test for biodiesel. Um, we've done a number of validations with plants. Many of the plants, when they bring in our new method, will run parallel studies with us or parallel studies with uh, Jeff uh, to validate the different parameters. Um, in particular, in the uh, total glycerin, we're using a very sensitive way to make a measurement of that molecule. Um, we're using a targeted enzyme, an enzyme that detects the monodies and triglycerides, and then we couple it uh, through several enzymes to produce a red color, and that quantitates our total glycerin. The nice part of that test is it's working at a very uh, high dilution of your biodiesel. So even if the biodiesel is acidic, has water, has a lot of other things, people will measure it during processing to see how far the reaction has gone to completion, as well as the finished product. Uh, because we're looking at the biodiesel at a very high dilution, it, we see very little interference in all the testing we've done, even working with palm oils, highly colored, uh, all kinds of other problems that you might have in your biodiesel during reaction. And, finished product. Uh, so it's a very sensitive and accurate. As I mentioned, we did do um, validations with NREL and saw a very good correlation for the total glycerin to GC. This was a correlation we did early on uh, for the free fatty acid. This was part of our AOAC performance tested cer certification. The first NREL study was a fairly small study, just uh, 20 samples, uh, but it was across the entire range that might be important. Uh, since then, we've done a lot of other studies. Uh, one of the two lab studies we just finished this last year uh, was with Methus, um, where we saw a correlation total glycerin to GC of 0.99 and a good lab-to-lab -lab study uh, using Miniscan in both labs. So this was ASTM, uh, GC methodology for measuring total glycerin versus our enzymatic detection of total glycerin. And then uh, this was a recent study with Mathis. And this doesn't work that well. This and that was our lab to lab using mini scan between the two labs on six samples. Uh, the method has a considerable number of patents uh, and a background in terms of the technology, both of the chemistries and of the testing units, and there's lots and lots and lots of references uh, that you can find on our website if you want to see the background of the technology validation. So I want to show you <coughs> just how easy it is uh, to run a sample. I think I've left my samples right there. You'll find it's quite different than what you were just seeing. I have one biodiesel, and I do have the shake and break of it already being tested, and one biodiesel. When you get these test kits, they do contain a QC release. 
uh, that establishes the calibration for that particular test. Um, it's loaded in there. So when we're reading a sample, we're reading against known values from uh, determined what we call calibrators. And this is in every single kit comes with this few, full QC. So if I wanted to run something like my oil, and this is a sunflower or something, I'm simply going to take it and add it right into my testing tube. These are called mini pipetters. They're as accurate as some of the big, more expensive pipetters. They're simple to use. And I'm going to add a detection reagent. So this would be the equivalent of what Graydon showed you to do the um, free fatty acid titration. I'm going to shake that up and I'm going to be able to read it. That's my sample. I select on here free fatty acid test. Uh, it's asking, actually it's asking for a calibration. But normally I would just simply put in the tube and make a reading. It would display the free fatty acid results and it would also have them stored on the flash drive on the unit. So that's a free fatty acid equivalent titration. 100 microliters of your soap using a mini pipetter of your uh, feedstock, 150 microliters of your detection reagent, shake it, and read it. So it's very straightforward, it's very easy. Um, if I was outside the range of the test, this particular test goes from zero to about 3%, I would have to perform a dilution on the feedstock. But these tubes are prepared for you for doing the dilution, so it's only one more step. The reaction is instantaneous and you get your free fatty acid. To convert that to acid number is a multiplication factor. Is that a straightforward procedure? Are there questions on how to use it? So that's an example. If I want to run total glycerin, I'm going to simply go back to home and I'm going to select total glycerin. And I am going to uh, run my biodiesel sample. All biodiesel samples in process or finish are going to be diluted. And that means that I make a simple dilution of the biodiesel. Uh, these tips are not reusable. And when we get finished, hopefully you can come up and see some of the displays. I'm going to take 200 microliter aliquots. And this is the sample that I will test. You can see with that dilution, it really makes sure that we have very little um, interference. And I'm going to use a small 50 microliter pipetter to add some of that dilution to my tube with the enzymes. It starts a 10 minute countdown and we leave it in the heat block for 10 minutes. <coughs> I think if you can see the difference, that original sample was pale yellow and when it reacts with the biodiesel, it picks up the reddish pink color that's the indicator of total glycerin. The range of this test is from 0 to 0.6. So our target is to be below 0.24 in many, lab, in many plants is to be below 0.2. It's going to give you a quantitative answer to three decimal places in terms of the amount of total glycerin in your biodiesel. 
and the correlation with the uh, GC is 0.99. It's a very good correlation. It's a very sensitive method to use an enzyme that recognizes the molecule you want to test. So it detects it, and then we've got a chain of enzymes that produce the color based on the change in the enzyme grabbing hold of the glycerides. It actually is kinetic. Uh, it reacts at different rates for monodies and tries. We're using it at 39 degrees for 10 minutes to get a complete reaction of all the different molecules and to get a total glycerin. Um, but again, it's designed to be something that a plant operator can do. It doesn't require a skilled chemist. And it's designed to give you a quantitative uh, number on your total glycerin, not just is there an eighth or a quarter of an inch <coughs> to really tell you exactly how much total glycerin is there. Let me, let me question. Uh, Okay, so you capture mono, dyes, and tries? Mm -hmm. For this particular test, we're actually <coughs> running it at 39 degrees for 10 minutes to get a complete reaction of all three. Mm -hmm. The beauty of some of these methods is if they're feedstock independent. So whereas some of the other analytical methods, even GC, will have some concerns with particular types of feedstocks that have been used. Because we're using the enzyme, uh, it doesn't matter whether the biodiesel is produced from palm or canola or a variety. We've probably tested all of those different kinds of biodiesel. We were out in the lab in Idaho. I think we tested, um, I don't know how many different kinds of biodiesel that were made from different types of feedstock. The free fatty acid is also feedstock independent. When it was validated, it was validated on vegetable oils, animal oils, marine oils. Um, so that gives you an assurance if there's particular changes in analytical tests for certain kinds of starting materials. Uh, this is a little bit different way to do the testing that is independent of feedstock. Dr. Gordon, you alluded to, um, or this, from my perspective, you alluded to cost of testing as you were talking about uh, chemists and chemists. What would be a comparison of what you said the cost of the test would be uh, relative to the GC or the GC? How about that? You know, um, I can tell you what these tests cost. I really don't know uh, specifically. I know people have done cost analysis. Um, we just had somebody uh, in the frying industry do a, uh, actually in the rendering industry, do a big cost of analysis of our free fatty acid uh, versus the old method. Um, in general, our 10 test kits are going to give you a test that's about $6 a test. So, and we have a variety of ways of combining tests, 50 test kits, uh, packs that have different amounts of total glycerin and free fatty acid depending on what uh, people are running. But that's kind of a general ballpark. I don't work as much with the, with the pricing. Our basic price uh, for this unit is around $5,000 for the setup of the equipment and all the initial test kits. Uh, we do all the training. Um, it's very simple. I've never spent more than 45 minutes on the phone training a plant operator. Um, and that's a variety of people, um, people who are just there to do some of the mechanical work. It's very simple to run and to get accurate results. Um, so it's had a lot of successful use in plants where they want to be monitoring what's coming in, what's in process, what's finished before they go to ASTM testing. Um, so this gives you the quantitative information you need in order to produce your biodiesel and have biodiesel that hopefully you can sell. Um, but we're not saying this is giving you an ASTM result. It's giving you a result to monitor during production, during processing, anyone who's sophisticated in the plant can do it. They don't need to be a GC chemist, and they can get a good result that they can count on. Time, so, time to run these tests from a couple minutes to 10 minutes? 10 minutes is the total listener. Um, the person is probably gonna spend 30 to 60 seconds running it, but there's a 10 minute incubation for the enzymes to do the complete uh, detection. Uh, for the free fatty acid, it's, it's 30 to 
to 60 seconds. It's very fast. So you can run single samples, you can run 20 samples if you wanted to line up a whole bunch of biodiesel and just test them all at once. Um, it really doesn't matter. You can uh, do multiple readings on multiple samples. Uh, so that gives you another time advantage if you've got a lot of samples, a lot of feedstock you want to look at. We have some people um, in the rendering industry who actually are doing loads, tests on loads uh, that they're bringing in or shipping out. And they have this uh, with the driver. I've actually test, uh, trained one driver uh, to be able to determine free fatty acid on their load. So I think they're simple, they're fast, they're designed to be quantitative, they've got a lot of technology we try to not have you have to work with, um, but still get a good result. We do have a website, bonanzalabs.com, and uh, it's got a, a blog on there and a video and uh, any additional information you might want, articles. Um, so you can either use that or you can use uh, uh, me for more information, uh, Gordon at bonanzalabs.com, in terms of if you want specific articles that you saw in there or some of the AOAC uh, performance results. Huh? How do you need to redo a calibration? Are you doing calibration? Oh, calibration is done once every 30 days. Um, and what we do when we build our test kits, um, we build them to meet the calibration uh, standards we've set for that test asset. Uh, so they never vary uh, even when you're changing blocks uh, by more than one or two percent. Um, so yeah, you only need to recalibrate once every 30 days. And there you're really just taking known uh, materials that have a certain amount of total glycerin, a certain amount of FFA, and checking the instrument will give you the correct uh, slope that you use for determining your samples. Jeff? Do you provide those calibration standards, or how do you want to acquire? They're in the kit. They're in the kit. They're in the kit. Okay. They're in, the kit. in this kit, there is a blank that has no total glycerin. There is a total glycerin uh, with point, um, point 0.2 and total is from a point 0.4. Oh, oh, sorry, maybe point 0.1 and point 0.4. So 2 point plus a 0. Yeah, which is really fine. This is linear across a very wide range. We could go up higher, but in general we find if people are getting results about point, above point 0.6, they need to think about why their, their, uh, their total glycerin number is quite so high. So we keep our range from 0 to point 0.6. Just a couple other items because I've got some experience with the, with the clinics. Um, from our perspective, uh, those of you going on the tour, we uh, are in the process of what we call GCGs that are, are uh, expensive, complex, require <coughs> very intelligent, trained personnel. And also, the reality is that uh, we need to test quite a bit. So we're testing sort of all the way through our process. We're testing the conversion, so we're making some decisions about each path. On the device, and you don't have it, you really do suffer quality issues. With it. <laughs> and so, it really has helped us tremendously in uh, advancing and progressing from our perspective. And it also has um, cut the time that I need to train uh, new chemists to come on board um, significantly, significantly. So, I can make them very effective and, um, in a very special way. Very I think um, what we see, there's probably um, some of the bigger plants that do have GC, but they also will have mini-scan. Um, they run the GC less often. Um, they run the mini-scan more routinely, uh, like New Leaf down in San Diego. Um, we see other um, plants, that, such as uh, Chris Sullins that Jeff has been working with, that they run the mini-scan. They don't have a GC. They go to an outside laboratory to get all their confirmatory validation testing. Um, so they use this as their in-house process control until they're ready to do a final test at an outside lab. So those are the, the two particular ways. We do see, um, we have uh, the equipment in at some farms that are big enough to be producing biodiesel to run on their own farm equipment. Uh, so that's a, 
Another interesting application, I think those people may not do much outside testing except in the beginning um, because they are pretty sure of what they're doing and what their equipment will tolerate in terms of biodiesel uh, that I think uh, we heard earlier. Are there any other questions? As I mentioned, uh, we're looking at putting soap on here. Uh, I think we heard earlier that that's a really important test. Um, people need to be running because it can be deceptive. Uh, and Todd's been encouraging us to do it as well as giving us some samples and we'll probably get Jeff to help us with doing some final validation testing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I particularly mentioned that because I, it's been known to give some problems in terms of testing. We have actually quite a bit of problems of people that you're in the community sector to do a run through quite a bit of so feel free to come up. Um, I passed out some manuals just so you could see how easy these manuals are probably overkill. And you saw what I did to run a sample. As I mentioned, usually it's 30 minutes on the phone. I go through it the first time just to make sure that the person is adding the right sample to the right uh, tube. But I think uh, it's very self-explanatory. And we do have video of how to run a test on our website. It actually shows you somebody who's running a test. Mm -hmm. And when you do get that, uh, if you do get the soap content test ready, you can just download it to an existing. Mm -hmm. Okay, just buy the little kit to go with it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the flash drive that we use to download data um, is also can be used to upgrade programs. So when you get your soap test done, you just can download it. Yeah, yeah. We send it to you. We put it on a flash drive. You download it into the uh, instrument. <coughs> yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Uh, after working with the safe tests, I really wanted a different kind of unit and something that was less like a lab method. Uh, so our goal was to have the data much more easily retrievable and the equipment more easily programmable. So, so please feel free to come up and look. Um, we have yeah, a. Should be great. If these are in your calibration, that might be a better way to go. We've got, hmm? time. We've got tons of time. So. Uh, oh, I've got tons of time? Yeah, yeah, tons of time. Well, some people might want to just come up and look at the equipment, um, see where they are. I'm happy to run a calibration on the total glycerin. Uh, I need another plug to be able to plug the uh, heater in. Yeah, I have one more question for you. Uh huh. We're starting to see some of the bodies made from UCO come out pretty dark uh, in the finished product. Since it's essentially a color metric, do you find any challenges with that? No, that's why I mentioned interference. Um, because in order to work with the biodiesel in the total glycerin, you dilute it initially 1 to 10, and then test it. And you tested it uh, 0.025 mLs per 1.2 mLs of detection reagent. So there's another 1 to 100. So the amount of color we never have seen make a difference. And we've run a lot of biodiesel that is darker brown, um, yellow uh, from corn, you know, a variety of colors. It, it, we have not seen any interference. So you can dilute that colored body out, but still have a nice load of texture. Yes. That's because the enzyme detection system we're using is extremely sensitive. Um, it wasn't developed initially for total glycerin. It was uh, developed initially in another application. We uh, moved the reagents into this determination. But we had used that in determining the amount of fat in different kinds of food matrices. And it's sensitive enough on our food side that we are probably the only method available in the U.S. that the egg companies can use to read to 0.005% fat in egg whites. So that sensitivity allows us to work with a more dilute biodiesel, avoid any of the color interactions. Yeah? When you use uh, an enzyme-based method to do uh, soap, do you get interferences with other contaminants? Now, soap is not a method we're going to be able to do the enzyme. Okay, so you talked earlier about 
Yeah, that's for the total glycerin. Yeah, do the soap. Um, unfortunately, enzyme-based methods uh, have a sensitivity uh, to certain ingredients, so they would have some sensitivity to the levels of soap. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use a different type of chemical detection system for the soap test. It would look very much like our free fatty acid. You take your sample um, into uh, a reaction tube, add a detection, and by a color change, you're going to monitor how much soap was there. You'd still have to go through the same calculation of whether it's sodium or potassium uh, that you have to do with the other methods. Any range limitations for the free fatty acid or as well as the you know, we have people now who are using it with free fatty acids that are 80 to 100%. In fact, it's a much more um, usable method for very high free fatty acids than any of the other methods where you'd be titrating. Um, so we found that by doing a simple dilution of 1 to 100, you've got an 80 right down in the range of the free fatty acid test. Uh, so you do have one dilution step, um, but I've had people using it um, now for, I guess they call it brown grease. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty high-end FFA. Uh, so um, we've seen that it worked well. We've done some correlations with uh, other methods to determine free fatty acid in that range. Uh, and we have some people that are using this equipment only for brown grease free fatty acid. They're not making biodiesel. They're just monitoring brown grease. Can you go over the cost of the test of total glycerin acid and everybody else? Yeah, in our bulk kits, and I'm not, I'm not defined, I don't get into the pricing a lot, so I'm, I might give you off by a couple of dollars, but we're definitely under $10. The free fatty acid is probably our least expensive, and um, it's $4 or less. Uh, total glycerin is more. Um, and it would be in that six or seven dollar range. Um, but uh, we don't have prices on the website, but if you email me, I will put you in touch with the fellow that does all the pricing and you can uh, talk to him about test kit pricing and unit, the cost of the basic unit. Um, and he's, he's very knowledgeable, he's got all the pricing. said this is a newer unit as opposed to the old unit you used to use? It's a newer system. We originally developed what was called the um, safe test system um, that came out in about 2005 and then we went back in the development of this in about 2009. Well the way computers are every four to six months seems like a better one comes along so the efficiency of this system is up to such a high standard. We don't need to worry about that for the next year or two years. No, um, we really don't see, uh, we incorporated as much technology uh, as was available today. The older safe test really used a, an instrument to read the results um, that had outlived its, its technology. So <coughs> this one is, is a um, very, very recently done version that is, is going to be, I think, reliable and usable in biodiesel food waste management systems for a long time. We just see adding tests as what it, what we really, our goal is to add more tests. Um, we know that we could put methanol on there, we know that we could put soap on there, we just have to have the time to get through all the development. Do you have any questions? <laughs> well, for those of you interested in seeing her calibrate, thank you so much, Dr. You're very welcome.